Hello everyone. Um, I just bought the uh, Audi version of their this battery charger. Audi and Lidl had battery charger wars going on for some time, and uh, a week or so ago, I um, reviewed the uh, one that I got from Audi. But I was in Lidl and I couldn't resist it. I don't need the battery charger, but I bought it because it looks so similar. So I thought I will just see which one was best. You might be interested. But you know, for a start, this one is like wow. Look at this. We have in this battery charger. We have Flirt Processor. Full Logic Intelligent Regulation Technology. Full Logic. It's a Flirt. Okay, so uh, that's good. So the, the, the Audi one um, has got something different, but this is the legal battery charger. Fortunately, I didn't keep the packaging for the, the Audi version, the Auto XS, but here it is. And yeah, they don't have um, the Flirt technology. They have this technology here. It'll be fully protected with the Fully Adaptive Recharge Technology. Very good, eh? What an acronym that one is. Without further ado, we're going to whap it out of the box. And I have got a knackered old battery we can charge regeneration as well. I mean, this one claims to have pretty much exactly the same features as the Pulse Recharge due to flat batteries. And then down there is a star that says with an existing available battery of 7.5 volts. So there's more information on this, but it's spookily um, similar to the functionality we discovered when we tested the, the Audi battery charger, okay? So it's the same. So I wonder if it's made in the same factory and it's got the same electronics in it or not. Um, so without further ado, let's get her out of the box and have a look, shall we? Right, so here she is, out of the box. The first thing I would say with regard to the, um, this is the the one I bought from Aldi literally just over a week ago. You can see it's a bit larger, it's much more plasticky, and the, the, the quality of the finish, you can see you've got all this nice patterning and you've got this um, nice finish on this, and these are inlays and details and a gasket there. There's a gasket in this one as well, but it's not chosen to be a neutral colour, this one's a black one. But it's the same, very similar, and if you look at the overmold details on the end here, they're remarkably similar. Cable looks the same. Notable differences then, so feels the same. Display looks the same size. We've got an extra two additional LEDs on this one, so the reverse charge indicator on the ultimate speed Lidl version has got um, the reverse charge as a light, and we've got a separate power light. On this, you've just got the backlight and the reverse charge is that symbol but in the LCD display so they've removed that. So who copied who? Who makes what? And uh, where does each one come from? That's a good question isn't it? So this is a bit chunkier but one of the major differences is this this one, the Lidl Ultimate Speed, claims to be 5 amps where I know this is 3.79 amps because I measured it last week in the other video. I should go back and have a look at the video if, you, uh, if you're at all interested in the detailed review of this one. Okay, inside and out. What we got? We got um, look at the specs on the back. Quick, quick review of the specification. Right here we go. So what do we have? Um, yeah, so this one's rated at five amps. This one's rated at three point eight amps. So straight away you've got over a twenty percent increase in charging current uh, on the on the Lidl version. It's um, the, this moulding looks cheap and it looks pretty nasty and it's just the definition on this moulding is not particularly good. Whereas on this one, the moulding is quite a bit nicer actually. They both have the same trilobular triangular screws in there holding the thing together. Um, so there it is. Um, got the MD18559 uh, from Audi and the Ultimate Speed UL. GD 5.01 A1 from Lidl, and they're both made bought within two weeks of each other. I've been, I've not seen, um, I've seen a previous version of this with the display from Ultimate Speed, uh, and actually, if you look on the website on on the channels, I say, there's a, re a detailed repair and modification because these did not have flat battery recovery in them, so I put flat battery recovery into one. Um, as a modification, just for a laugh, really. Um, so, what else? What are the main major differences? Uh, the clips are different. Look, so the design of the clips. This is the um, needle clip. It's got good spring to it. You can see the wire is spot welded or fuse welded onto the um, tinned mild steel contact plate there. Um, 
I'd say the 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 Audi charger has got quite a lot more spring to it. This is quite comfortable to have that on your finger, but it's not comfortable to have this one. So I think I would prefer these clips, especially when your terminals are a bit corroded. But having said that, they're nice. They've got ultimate speed written on them. They're um, not shrouded in here. These ones have got shrouds in here, look, which would prevent it shorting accidentally on the battery clamp or something as you clip it on whereas these don't have the shroud so they are slightly different but I'm guessing they're both as functional as the other um, yeah so there they are side by side clippy clippy right battery charger wars okay let's put the Audi one to one side for now and then concentrate on this so I'm going to rig this up and just give it a quick test and make sure it does pump out the 5 amps and the cutoff voltages. I won't bore you with the detail. If you want to see the detail of how I test these, then just have a look at the, the Audi video where I test it and evaluate it because it is pretty long-winded. And I'll just cut to the chase on this one and tell you what my conclusions are. Okay, so back in a moment after I've done some testing. Quick look at the mains plug. It looks good. It's strong. It's got a plastic pin for the uh, earth. Of course, it's double insulated, so it doesn't need an earth connection. And it's also got the insulated parts here. Some of these have solid pins, which allows you to get your fingers around the back and, and uh, get a shock if you pull the plug out in a particular way. But these look okay. Okay, so we've got the battery charger connected up to the load, the electronic load, and a power supply, so we can vary the battery voltage and we can vary the current at which it charges, okay, so that's all you need to know, really. And this is connected directly across the battery terminals, on the uh, clipped onto the crock clips themselves. So this, if I just move that to there, is actually connected onto the back of the crock clips, so they will give you exact voltage of what the, um, the charger is seeing, so we can measure the, check the accuracy of the charger, right? So a quick check there, turn the power on, and... We're set to 230 volts, which is the required input voltage according to the specification. Hit the button, and we've got motorcycle charging mode. It's saying 12.0 volts. We're reading 12.09, so that's um, fiendishly close, isn't it? Look at that, within um, <coughs> 10 millivolts. Fantastic. Okay, and the system says we're charging at 0.8 amps, so that's the motorcycle charge at 12.8 amps. So let's just check, this next one will check the actual maximum charging current. So we go to car mode, and we're reading 5.23 amps, which is 230 milliamps more than the spec, okay? Audi one was 25 milliamps under the spec um, at 3.8 amps. So this is delivering the charge, okay? So let's just check the cutoff voltage. Let's increase the, yep, so 12.39, we're measuring 12.5, 12.48, 12.5, still the accuracy is still good. Now as we climb this up, it should reduce the charging current. We're still at five and a quarter amps at the moment. So now at 13.7 volts, it's dropped to three amps, right? And then at 14.5 or thereabouts, it drops to 70 milliamps. And if we just creep up now, it's still some 70 milliamps. So here we hit the power, I set the battery to 7.5 volts, actually it's reading 7.49, it's reading under slightly, so I'm going to have to turn it up a little bit just to get it over the 7.5 threshold that it desires. What do you desire? 7.5 volts. No, still not. 7.57, that's reading 7.4, that's weird isn't it? It's a little bit out of the lower end obviously. 7.7 volts, 7.57. So it's reading 7.5. So now when I hit this button, we should go into regeneration mode. Regeneration. There you go, so it's flashing. All right. Now it'll do this. So if you connect your battery up and you hit the button, and it's doing that, it's waiting for the battery voltage to stabilize, which is the same behavior as the Aldi one had. Don't know why it's important to have it stabilized but there must be a reason. There's lots of myth about regenerating batteries and this regeneration mode is, is referring to if you've got a sulfonated battery where lead sulfide has formed on the plates because it's been flat for a long time. Essentially the acid turns to almost water, lead sulfide, um, lead sulfide will form and unfortunately lead sulfide is not very soluble in water. So it, it connect, conducts across the plates, your plates are shorted out and your battery doesn't work. But if it's not so badly done, then this, in theory, according to some people, not everyone subscribes to it, will somehow get rid of some of the lead sulfide on the plates, 
which um, was it lead sulfide or lead sulfate? It's lead sulfate. Yeah, lead sulfate. And um, yeah, if it's kind of white coating on the plates, it's going to affect the capacity and the maximum uh, current capability of the battery, i.e., the performance. Then this is supposed to regenerate it. But I've never known it to work. But we can try it. Uh, but what I really want, if my battery is flat and I've gone out and I left my lights on, is for the thing to start charging and doing some biz doing the business. Okay. Okay. So now. It's still flashing, but now we've got this um, the battery flashing here, and it's just 7.5 flashing. So if you see those two flashing, it's in regeneration mode. And what I can see on the current meter is we've got a voltage of 7.7 .7 volts, and we've got 0.8 amps of charging current flashing in for probably about 500 milliseconds, or 300 milliseconds, then off for 300, and then back on for 300. So it is regenerating a lot faster than the um, the pulsing is much faster than the Audi battery charger um, but it, I suppose they're still on for 50% of the time so the rate of charge will be the same it's just the pulsing rate is faster it's pulsing faster okay so it's regenerating the battery and this will take some time because bear in mind even if I press that for car battery it changes to car battery but I can still see the same um, desulfonation rate, the, re the recovery rate. I want the full 5 amps, please, to get my car going so I'll go to work. Don't you? So let's turn the voltage up on this. Get it higher, up to 8 volts. Let's, let's, hit, let's cut the chase and go to 9 volts. Okay, so it's recovered, it's to 9 volts. It's still doing the same thing pulsing at the same speed so let's recover to 10 volts still pulsing 0 0.8 0 0.8 0 0.98 0 okay let's go up to 11 volts the 10.25 volts okay okay we've cut to a full charge in the instructions it said that this should happen yeah 10.5 10.7 volts so yeah it is it's going it's 5.25 amps now which is faster than the Audi one and then just whiz up to the uh, 12 volts 12 volts we've still got 5.25 amps 12.5 volts we still got 5.25 amps okay I go 13 volts 13 volts still got 5.25 amps 13 that's 13.4 volts actually reading 30.5 here five, still 5.25 amps so we get we're nearing to 75 volts 3 amps it's dropped to 3 amps now we carry on up carry on up to 14 volts 3.08 amps still carry on up to 14.25 volts We've dropped to 0.8 amps now so when is that supposed to happen in the spec yeah 14.4 now if we just carry on up carry on with the trickle charge the 0.8 amp trickle charge into the car battery this is um, we need to set that to 14 right the 14.4 uh, volts we're still at 0.85 amps 14.6 six eight volts we've dropped to 70 milliamps which is about right and then if we carry on up now if I go to at some point this will cut out the 70 milliamps still so I'm still 70 milliamps 70 minutes there you go it's charged okay so that's when it went charged it was 15 volts so that, that's good actually it's working well so on balance I think I prefer to have this one it's uh it's a nicer feel, nicer touch, and it's higher current. For the same price, this is my choice. So finally, let's just whip the back off and have a look inside, and we'll do a quick comparison to see if the build quality is better than the, the Lidl, sorry, the Aldi one. Getting them mixed up now. Okay, so let's go inside the girl and see what she's got. Well, here's the two battery chargers side by side. I thought I'd whip them out so you can have a look at the build and immediately it's obvious that the um, Lidl version has got a much bigger transformer because the power transmission is a lot bigger than this one which is strange because it's only 20% more power so they've used a much much bigger transformer um, what I'll do when I finish this I'll load them both up to full working current and then we'll take a look at this with the infrared camera and see whether the Lidl one runs cooler or hot or whatever because we've got more power being dissipated in a smaller housing so you would think it, the outer housing temperature would get higher but let's just try that afterwards but bigger transformer um, bigger reservoir capacitor look 
The capacitors aren't the same manufacturer, they're different manufacturer, but they're different values as well. There's extra capacitor here. Um, same capacitor here. The driver transistor is the same one, and the input filter looks um, very similar, but the layout is different, okay? Um, but essentially the same components in there, just laid out differently. The board specification of the PCB itself is the same spec, identical. You can zoom in on that if you want to, but it's the same material the board's made from. And the metal heatsink is slightly different, although the arrangement of the output stage, which is a switching output stage to regulate the current, it's got this similar inductor, different colour, but same value, and the same components, but arranged differently. So I'm concluding at the moment that they one is a slight copy of another, or I doubt that they are made in the same factory, but I can't be sure, can I? Um, if they've been designed by the same PCB manufacturer, i.e. the person who did the layout, then you'd think that the fonts and everything else would be the same, although this device here has got the same uh, the rectifier device has got the same uh, denomination D8 as that one. So they're both D8s in both mach machines and this one's C20 and that one's C20 as well. So draw your own conclusions from whether they're the same. Just spin them over and have a look at the back side. Uh, so there's the back side of the boards. Uh, the top one's the uh, legal one. This is the alley one. Immediately you can see, even though the co one, one is a copy of the other, I think, I don't think they're made in the same factory. And looking at the soldering on the, the needle one, the soldering looks a lot shinier, a lot brighter. And you know, I'd say the overall quality is slightly better on the needle version. You can see whoever laid these PCBs out, whoever did the track design, has more or less copied the other one, but they're no, by no way identical with each other okay especially in the power supply section you can see that different angles different radius they broke the corners they haven't break the corners there they broke the corners there they haven't bothered to break the corners there all right yeah they've got similar component identical component markings look if you look here and the layout is the same it's just the track is different so whether one's just been contracted to design by someone else i don't know difficult to say isn't it but there it is Similar quality, but the um, needle one is a 5 amp one, and the design looks a lot beefier, especially in the the power transformer section, is 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 much much bigger, uh, much much meatier. Um, you know, the mass and size per watt of power is much less on the needle one, i.e., the transformer is not under such a significant load. For the extra 20% load, it's much more than 20% bigger as a transformer. So without further ado, the displays all look similar and everything else, although, is the display the same? It's an identical display, but that could just be off the shelf. So I'll put them on load, and then we'll just see how hot they get, and I'm erring towards the, I like the needle one best, by, by far actually. It's a much better, higher current, slightly nicer build, better rated component inside. Um, as I say, these were purchased just uh, literally 10 days apart from uh, Lidl and Audi in the UK. So I'm going to stick them on load. We'll let them um, heat up and see how they perform. Okay, they're on charge now. Pumping 9.05 amps into the load. So respectively, we've got 5.5 5 .5 amps and 3.8 amps or something like that going into the load. The, uh, the Lidl one says we've got make sure that end doesn't touch it go bang um, so we've got two bars and the sorry the Audi one says we've got two bars and the little one the ultimate speed has only got one bar and I've just noticed a feature that's not available on the on the needle one on the Audi one I think I've covered this before if you press once it shows you the current it also switches to cold charge mode which is a bug really it should just show you the current and you press again while the current is showing, it should go to cold charge. There's a bug in the in the Audi one, but um, you do get to see what the current is there, and then it will revert back to 12.7 volts. Whereas on the Lidl version, it just changes mode. They haven't got the current readout. 
So you don't know what your charge current is, which, you know, I guess doesn't matter really, but I prefer to know what my charge current is, just in case it's sitting there doing nothing, okay? But they're both reading the same voltage, and interestingly, look, you'd have thought if it was the same display, look at the icon for the car. The needle has a different icon, so it's a different custom display. So these, I think, are pretty sure, if you look at the shape of the battery charge icon as well, that's different. These are pretty, I'm pretty sure that these are not the same manufacturer. They're, one's a copy of the other and an enhanced mode. So they're on full load at the moment. I'm going to leave them running for maybe half an hour. And then we'll have a quick look with the infrared camera just to see who's cooking, um, who's cooking best. Um, no, you know, no audible noise from them at all. The whirring and stuff you can hear is from the, the load, which is now ex um, absorbing 70 odd watts of power into the load, okay. Um, so yeah, and in short, um, just to sum up. Okay, let's have a look at some of these components through the uh, infrared camera to see what they're doing. There's nothing much going on the input filter side, but on the uh, power FET, which is doing the switching for the power supply, we've got 73 degrees on the Lidl unit. On the Aldi unit, we've got 71, 72, so not a lot of difference there really, although it's switching 20% more power. 71.4, 72, something like that, and 69, so not a lot of difference. Then the tops of the transformers, <coughs> 75 on the Lidl one, that's, the unpo oh, that's, me, that's me poking so I can see where I'm looking, okay, it's just a tie wrap. Uh, so we've got 71, 72 degrees, and on the Audi one we have... 69 degrees, so not a lot of difference really, not an awful lot of difference, okay? Now if we go back to any other hot spots anywhere, I guess the rectifier diode is going to be one there. And so here is the rectifier diode, we're looking at the top of the rectifier diode there. So we've got 80, 82 degrees on the Lidl unit. Fifty-three degrees on the Audi unit, and actually, if I touch this, this heatsink here on the Lidl unit is too hot to touch. It really is hot. You know, if that was hot water, you'd pull your hand out quickly. Whereas this one on the Audi unit is a lot cooler, quite a bit cooler actually. So, yeah, there's more thermal stress on the on the Lidl unit as you'd expect. Um, I'll put them back in their cases and see and see what we get um, in terms of the outside case temperature as well because um, I know that the Audi one did get quite toasty. It'd make a very very good hand warmer if you're charging your battery uh, at room temperature. It was probably 55 degrees on the case on the outside after it'd been on for several hours at full charge. But there's the difference. Whether that translates into any reliability issues, I don't know. But um, yeah, so I'm going to stick them back together, and I think we're pretty much done now, actually. The display is interesting. Uh, the difference in the display, the lack of the current reading on the Lidl one, is something I'd like to have the current on. you notice as well that on this part here, if I go back to over here, on the display, is that the Lidl one has this little button on top of the switch, the tack switch there, which is a nice load spreader and prevents the button button going down too far. Whereas the um, Audi one only has the button on pressing up on the underside of the the dome switch. This dome switch, dome switch there. Look that one. And I've designed a lot, quite a few products, and some of them were used in airports. And I know that if you take a attack switch like this and whack it, it the dome. It's a little collapsing dome that gives you the click. You can imagine like um, it, it's not one of those little poppers, you know, it pops out and then pops back. But if you give this a good whack, then the dome collapses or splits or gets dented or deformed. So if you're putting a, a tack switch in a piece of equipment, you need to make sure that it, if you hit it, you don't get this collapsed dome issue. Because it's caught me out twice on stuff that I've actually designed. So. Yeah, be aware of that. That I think the the switch, the engineering is a little bit better because you've got this protection for your dome, uh, your tack switch uh, dome, by having this little actuator pad 
which prevents overactuation. And um, if you hit the button by mistake on here, you, know, you chuck it in the toolbox, it could knack you a little tack switch, and then you're game over for your battery charger. But apart from the current and the bit sort of foibles of, con of um, functionality, clearly the ultimate speed being the same price as the uh, Auto XS version, then the ultimate speed Lidl latest battery charger model number model number ULGD 5.0 A1 is a better piece of kit okay now um, again Lidl Audi no recycling marks in the plastic I think it's a slightly better grade of plastic than the, the Audi one but I can't be sure but uh, yeah it's supposed to have recycling marks in it chaps for CE I'm pretty sure if I'm wrong contact me let me know and I'll apologize but I think I'm right in saying you should facilitate the recycling of these things all right so there you go that's the two battery chargers I'll stick them back together and um, give one away I suppose to somebody who's a worthy recipient um, hope you found that interesting so anyway Buy the Lidl one, the ultimate speed if you can, it's better.